Shiva. Yes. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. Yes. I have a gift for you. Just look. Wow. Shiva speaks slowly. Hello, I am Shiva and here is Jonathan. Welcome to the Matrixers. Yes. So our topic today is the inner earth. Exact namely, what beings are still within the earth matrix? We want to do that as a video series, for example about natural beings, inner earth, etc. And today we start with the inner earth people I would say. The inhabitants of the inner earth. Exactly. And we're going to do that today as an interview. In an interview style, because I haven't had that much to do with it yet. I haven't been particularly interested in it until now, but Jonathan is quite good at it. That's why I have my clever piece of paper here and I'm going to ask him a few questions. Yes, I am curious, Shiva. Good. So. Oh, that looks long. That looks very long. It's like six pages. Have fun, folks. Well, maybe I'd rather split it into two videos so you don't have to watch for so long. Exactly. Well, let's start with the inner earth, Jonathan. And indeed, many know Mount Shasta in connection with the city of Telos and the Untersberg and Berchtesgaden. And yes, the hollow world is called Agartha and the capital Shambhala. Uh, what? Can you tell us about that? For example, about the mysterious mountains and the entrances to the inner earth or which are supposed to house the inner earth. And about all the energy fields that are there. Yes. Yes, so the inner earth is said to exist inside the earth. No, don't fuck up. Yes, it is believed that the earth is actually hollow. And inside the earth there are also continents, a sea, a kind of sun and also many, many inhabitants of the inner earth. It is assumed that every planet is hollow, which means that through the billions of years that the earth has rotated again and again, experiments have also been carried out, it has been noticed that the mass forms at the edge of the sphere and a cavity generated. Yes, of course. Yes. There are also two entrances to this inner earth, i.e. two main entrances. One of the entrances is at the top about level with the 86th floor. Latitude at the North Pole and down in Antarctica there should also be access. But it's covered by ice, which means you can only get in underwater for a submarine or someone who can die for a long time. But it will probably be a bit cold. And there are already many stories about the inner Earth. But I have to say, that the Nazis also dealt with the subject. Then precisely because Hitler had heard of this myth as well, and of course he sent a few officers to investigate this myth or this legend. I once heard that if you went to the South Pole in a ship, you would eventually encounter an energy wall. Behind it one would then be at the entrance of the inner earth. Can you say something about it or do you know some- I don't think so. Because the entrance is more horizontal than vertical. That means, for example, at the North Pole, the opening should have a diameter of about 200 kilometers. Oh, yes. So you can easily get in there with a big ship and the ship goes along the North Pole and then the water lowers and then the ship really swims into the hole and turns. And then it's just upside down, just. 
inside the Earth. I once heard from Ramtha that at the North Pole at the entrance to the inner Earth it is no longer supposed to be icy cold and like that, but actually tropically warm. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. So, certain researchers have also found that penguins are always migrating north. Despite the cold, always north, north. And entire groups of penguins have disappeared without a trace. Yes. I have no idea how they got here, and I have no idea who likes penguins here. I really have no idea. <laughs> Continue on my clever note, and indeed, in the course of evolution, I should not only have formed a continent on the earth, but also within the earth. And the inner earth is to be fed by the central sun. Exactly. In addition, different races are said to live there in the inner earth and the superordinate race, which is spiritually very well developed, are said to be the Ariani. What can you say about that? Yeah, right. So, there are several races down there in the inner earth. And as you say, the most advanced on a spiritual level and also technologically are the Ariani. They also have UFOs. So what does UFO mean? So they also have spaceships. That's right, I heard. They're at Mount Shasta. They all come out there and stuff like that. And then when a mothership comes out, it's supposed to form a huge cloud over Mount Shasta and then use it to camouflage the UFO, right? Yes, right, right. And the Ariani are already very advanced mentally and technologically and are, so to speak, yes, how should I put it? They also manage the whole politics of the structure inside the Earth. But of course there are also races in the inner Earth that are a little further behind or have not stayed behind, but have remained more natural, more in touch with nature. They don't want to have anything to do with technology. They just live like in the country. Very easy. Um. I've been there once. Yes, on an astral journey. And then I got to know those who live more in the countryside. And you really feel like you're with the hobbits. Well, they really live about the same as with the hobbits. Very enjoyment oriented. Very funny. Very, I think I'm a hobbit. Yes. Very funny. Okay. Exactly. Then we come to gravity. How does gravity work inside the earth? Are they upside down or how does it work? Do you all fly? Well, you can imagine we are on the surface and those in the inner earth are also walking on the surface but upside down. And there are two theories about that. One theory says that in the middle at the edge, of the earth there is a kind of gravitational ring, some kind of force that is responsible for gravitation. And that's why those below hang with their legs and the people above. The second theory is that gravity simply arises automatically through rotation. Yes. And the rotation makes it possible to stay on the ground. Okay. Exciting. Yes, then we come to all the Nazi stories that you have already mentioned. And there are supposed to be witness reports about the inner earth. And then there is this bird, as he is called, who flew into the pole opening in an airplane in Jansen with his boat trips. The Nazis in the U-boats. What can you do to us? Report on all the stories about the inner earth and the journeys and flights. Yes. Richard Bird was just a pilot who just flew his plane to the Arctic, to the Arctic. And there he suddenly noticed that over time it was becoming more and more tropical or got warmer and warmer. And suddenly he also saw vegetation, saw forests, meadows and the like and was totally surprised. Because that's actually illogical. We know that too. The further north you fly, the colder it gets, the icier it gets. And he said that at a certain limit it gets really green and warm. So he noticed around 20 degrees Celsius there and then flew through this country and suddenly two flying objects appeared next to him. And these flying objects were flying discs, 
like UFOs, saucers, and they just talked to him over the radio. So that means they were able to really use the human radio and just invited him to come into the inner earth. And that's where they told him to take a message to the governments on the surface, to stop using nuclear weapons. And so that was after Nagasaki and Hiroshima and the nukes in the war and they said as soon as nukes were used on the surface again in the war they would interfere. Oh okay. And yes, Jansen, I think that's father and son who more or less accidentally got into this opening through the ship and then discovered the inner earth and lived there for a while. Okay, exciting, should we do it? And the Nazis, of course, tried to research that too. They tried to get into the hole via the South Pole with the submarine, and they probably made it. I don't know it. There is conflicting information in history. Do you think they were thrown out immediately? Yes, I can very well imagine that they were thrown out immediately. But as I said, the inner earth or the so-called hollow earth is not a product of the Nazis or an invention, because the legend has existed for tens of thousands of years. There were no Nazis then, exactly. Supposedly there are many secret entrances, tunnels in Tibet and Brazil, Peru, Egypt, in the Swiss Alps, Alsace, Afghanistan, the largest opening is said to be about 2,000 meters, kilometers even in size and in diameter and is located at the North Pole between the 82nd and 82nd and 83. Latitude, I mean 200 kilometers. 2,000 kilometers is pretty tough. Yes. Maybe the water is already sinking. Then at the very beginning, that's taken into account, you don't know. And from the 86th the central sun should already be visible at latitude, the inner sun, so that you can even see it, but nothing should be visible or to be found or recognized on Google Earth. And the satellite imagery from NASA and the US government has somehow set up a restricted area there. What, do you have any information on the whole topic? Yes. The interesting thing is that it really was the 86th latitude should be blocked by the military. So I haven't been there to check, but there have been some reports that this is the case. Ships, for example, are diverted and some airplanes too. They are not allowed to fly over the airspace there. Interesting. Most assume that all of this happened on the 90th birthday. Degree of latitude, but it is free, you can usually cross it. And what do you have to explain? How can you explain that you can't see it on Google Earth, for example? Or on NASA images? Yes, that's the way it is. The only ones who really provide satellite images are NASA. And we know that it's a profitable company. Is interested in economics and of course has sponsors who decide what can be published and what not. In fact, there is also a strong suspicion that NASA is a private company that only pretends to be and is actually a military company. So that means NASA is controlled by the military. At the same time, NASA takes the satellite images and only then evaluates them. And if there are any flying disks, UFOs or anything else on it, they are erased. They are simply painted over with digital software and only then passed on to Google. Okay, but the problem with this is that NASA of course has employees who look through the images and then of course edit them. 
but the problem is that it doesn't always work to retouch everything. Sometimes you suddenly see a flight recorder somewhere or you see something strange somewhere. But you can be sure when the internet is published that it will no longer be there with the latest current satellite images. And that's suspicious. Then why not leave that on there? Yes, that's strange. Yes, that is very strange. And then NASA passes on the satellite photos to Google, and Google makes the map out of them. Okay. Just censorship. Just like in the press or on TV. Even with satellite images.